If you use GMRS or ham radio to communicate while you're camping, hiking, or fishing, you're gonna to wanna to be able to program your radios. So today, we're gonna to look at the wireless programmer from TID Radio. Let's get into it. Hey guys, I'm Kevin with Kemp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that we love to camp, hike, and fish. And one of the things that's true about the outdoors is that you're not always in places that have good cell phone reception. So we rely on mobile communications through radio. So we use the General Mobile Radio Service, which is a licensed service. You have to have a licensed operated GMRS radio. But the good thing is, is that license covers your whole immediate family. So you only have to hold one license and your whole family can have radios and talk to each other. I'm also a ham radio operator. So there's times when I am using ham radio to communicate with different folks when I'm when I'm outdoors and th that kind of thing. So I use a lot of radio communications. And so one of the things that I was really excited was when TID Radio contacted me and asked if I wanted to review their wireless programmer. So why would you want to program a radio? Well, there are a number of reasons. Number one, you may want to program in a few different channels or frequencies that you use. If you're a ham radio operator, you have a lot of different options when it comes to the frequencies that you can use. And so if you're camping with other uh, ham radio operators or hiking with other ham radio operators, you have a big uh, frequency range to choose from and different bands. If you're a GMRS operator, uh, most of those radios are programmed with you know the specific GMRS channels. But if you're in an area that gets a lot of noise, so oftentimes we're camping and we may be on a channel, but we hear a lot of uh, signals that break the squelch, but you can't hear what anybody's actually saying, you can program in privacy codes, which aren't really private, but what they do is they basically only set up your radio so that it only receives a signal if it's transmitting that code. So you can assign a code to the channel that you're on and put that on all your radios so that you're not hearing other breaks of squelch or, or other transmissions. You're only hearing the transmissions that you, that you wanna hear. So that might be a little confusing to you if you're new to radios, but trust me, once you start using a radio for a while, you're gonna want an easy way to program it. And one of the easy ways that I have found is this wireless programmer from TID Radio. Let's open the box and take a look. It's not a lot to it. <clears throat> and I don't do a lot of unboxings, guys, so I'm just gonna kinda do it right here. I don't have all the fancy top-down cameras and stuff. So first thing that pops out is just a little business card uh, with you know customer support contacts and, and stuff like that, uh, and then a, a web link. It does have a little manual and you know this is kind of confusing uh but it is the manual for the app that you use so you're going to download an app to your uh, apple or android device and it's called od master or odd master i'm not exactly sure uh, but you download that app and then this little booklet kind of tells you how to use it and then very simply guys it comes with a charging cord and then the Bluetooth programmer itself. Now, this programmer comes with the Kenwood uh, K1 connector. So only radios that have those connectors uh, will, will work and not every one of those radios. So this is primarily designed to work with uh, the Baofeng radios and the uh, talk pods and you know those kind of things, some radioddities. Uh, any Sekus, you know, those kinds of, the, uh, primarily the, the, the Chinese radios, but not all the Chinese radios. And then, of course, they have to have that K1 connector. So un, even though, you know, this is a, a Baofeng, this is a GMRS 9R, it has the fancy uh, screw-in type connector for the speaker mic. And then also this one is a, is a ham radio. This is a UV9R Pro from Baofeng, same type of connector. So 
Those radios don't work with this. The radios that work with this are the ones that have the Kenwood style speaker mic connector on the side. Let me see if I can get that focused. There you go. So it's really, really simple. All it does is plug right in, just like that. And then it's got a power button on top, and that's how you turn it on. It's got a charging port on the side, it's USB-C. So it, once you get it, once you take it out of the box, guys, you wanna charge it up for an hour before you use it. Then after that, it's download the app and see how it works. We're gonna take a look at this on a couple of radios to see how it works. All right, guys, so the first radio we're going to do this on is the TalkPod A36+. Plus. I did a review on this radio, guys, so if you want to check that out, uh, you can look at that. I'll put a link right up here where you can check out that radio. But basically, the first thing you do is you go ahead and you, you, you plug it in. I'm going to fire up the app. I'm going to turn it on, sync it, and then we'll see what happens. I'm gonna get the camera turned around so you can see my screen. I downloaded the app to my iPod, guys, because I film with my phone. So I'm gonna run the app on my iPad and you'll be able to see that. So let's get that taken care of. Okay, guys, so here we are. I've got the app running on the iPad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to program right there. And so I'm going to turn on the device so I turn on the device right there, see the blue light. I'm going to turn on the radio. All right, so the radio is on. I'm going to set that off to the side. Okay, then I'm going to hit select model. I'm going to select talk pod A36 plus, and then I'm going to hit connect. So see it says TID radio kit. I'm going to turn it on and it'll connect. Okay, so it's connected. It's telling me it's got a 9600 baud rate. I'm going to click read and see what happens. So it says incorrect baud rate. Please enter baud rate. So I'm going to hit confirm. It's going to disconnect it. I'm going to hit connect again. Turn it on. And sometimes this happens. Okay, so now it's connected with a 57600 baud rate. I'm gonna hit read again, and it is reading from the radio. You can see the lights flashing on the radio. Okay, so what this has done is it's brought up what is saved to the radio already. I've already have all these radios programmed. I didn't wipe them for this video. I'm just gonna show you uh, what I had. So in this case, we're on channel one. This is the transmit and, or the receive and transmit frequency. In this case, it's the same frequency because it's uh, just a, a, a simplex frequency, transmitting on high power, a whole bunch of other things. And then this is the name I've given that channel. So this frequency is actually the, the GMRS channel one. So if I want to look at a different channel, I click that button and then here are all the channels that are in the radio, right? So there's a whole lot of channels that's free to program. And so the red ones generally indicate I don't have anything in them and the green ones indicate that I do have stuff in them. So uh, in this case, why don't we check out, we'll just check out, check out channel 10. We'll see what channel 10 is. So channel 10 is, looks like another GMRS channel because it's in the GMRS frequency band. It transmits low power, so I'm guessing this is one of those channels that uh, needs uh, low power for GMRS, and it's GMRS channel 10. So if I want to address anything else, I'll click up there. Let's go to this 31 that doesn't have anything in it. So I'll click that. And so as you can see, it's channel 31, and then here are my receive frequency ranges, and my transmit frequency ranges. So I can enter anything into those fields because this, pro, this radio is programmed to either transmit on GMRS or HAM, or I should say and HAM in this case. It's wide open, it can be programmed to any channel. Uh, I could program in a ham radio frequency. I could program in a GMRS frequency. I could program in other frequencies for that matter and, and both transmit and receive. 
Guys, that is illegal. Just to let you know, a GMRS radio should only transmit on GMRS channels and nothing else. Ham radios are open so that you can program them to pretty much anything. But if you're a ham radio operator, you should only operate within the ham bands uh, for the, the the license that you're that you're qualified for. So uh, this channel obviously doesn't have a name because there's nothing in there. But if I wanted to enter in something, like let's say I wanted to enter in, um, I want to listen to let's say on Marine VHF channel 16, which is the hailing frequency for Marine VHF, I want to listen to that channel. So I would go up here and I would type 156.800 megahertz, right? That is uh, the frequency for Marine VHF channel 16. I'm not going to put in a transmit frequency because I'm not, this radio is not licensed to transmit uh, on that frequency. But if you wanted to, you could. And quite honestly, guys, I'll be honest, all of because I do a lot of fishing and a lot of fishing from a boat, if I have a ham radio on board, my ham radios are programmed to transmit on marine frequencies in case of emergency. I carry a marine VHF radio, but if for some reason that radio fails and it's an emergency, I still want communications. I will use an illegal radio to transmit in an emergency. It just makes sense, but... I won't do it as a general matter of course. So because that's the case, I'm gonna go ahead and let the transmit frequency stand. And then it's transmitting high power. I have no encryption, no decryption. Uh, and so if I wanted to name this, I would probably name it M-A-R, like Marine 16, right? And then if I wanted to write it to the radio, I would hit save. So we'll just call this TP for talk pod, and then we'll just call it one, right? So we'll just hit confirm. And then if I wanted to write that to the radio, I would click write. So as you can see, the radio is flashing. It's writing to the radio. It says okay, the radio is restarting. Okay, so since I wrote to the radio, you can now see that channel 31, which is right there, right? Channel 31 is Marine 16. So that's how simple it is to program the radio using the TID Radio wireless programmer. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to take a look at this TID Radio GM5R and I want to look at programming it and what I want to do is I want to change a channel mode what I want to do is I want to change a code a privacy code so what I'm going to do is I have turned off Bluetooth I'm going to go ahead and, I'm going to go ahead and plug it in turn it on okay now so what I'm going to do see the radio is on this Turned on. I'm going to go and change the radio. So instead of A36 Plus, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go to TID Radio, right? And I'm going to scroll till I find GM5R. There it is, GM5R. And now I'm going to hit Connect Bluetooth. Turn it on. It says it's connected. Now I'm going to hit read. I'm wondering if the baud rate is right. We're going to find out. Yep, incorrect baud rate. So hit confirm. It'll disconnect and we'll connect again. Connect Bluetooth. Turn it on. Okay, now it's giving me a 9600 baud rate. I'm guessing that's the right baud rate for the radio. So I'm going to hit read. Operation failed. We'll hit read again. Okay, so I didn't have the volume turned up enough, so that was probably the problem. You can see it's reading now. Got to make sure you have enough volume. 
And as you can see, it has read the radio. So there's nothing in channel zero, but if I go to channel one, so you can see there's a bunch of channels that have stuff programmed into them. You'll see that one is probably GMRS channel one. So 462.5625, yep, GMRS channel one. So as you can see, none of these channels have a decryption or encryption channel. So if I wanted to create a channel uh, that had encryption, I could either do it uh, this way where I could select any of these encryptions, right? Or actually in this case, I was a decryption and then here are the encryptions. Right? And any of these numbers do. What you want to make sure, though, is all your radios match the same numbers. Right? So you want to have the same ones. And then I could hit, you know, save and, and, and write to the radio. And then that would make channel one, a GMRS channel one, with the frequency of GMRS channel one, but only with those, with those codes enabled. What I like to do, and I'll show you, is... I like to create my own channels. So in this case, we'll go to channel 45. This is a channel I've already created, right? So, so this is a GMRS channel. And in this case, you can see I have chosen specific decryptions and encryptions, and all of my radios have this same channel. And what I did was I named it Kemp1. So when I have a GMRS radio and I hand it to my son or my wife or whatever, I'll say, hey, we're all on Kemp 1 or Kemp 2 or Kemp 3. And then we can use those channels and they, well, the radios will only receive a signal if the radio is transmitting that specific piece of encryption. Now, that doesn't mean that no one else can hear you but you can only hear radios that are transmitting that frequency. So my recommendation is before you even set out, go ahead and create yourself, if you have a GMRS radio, create yourself some GMRS channels with encryption and decryption codes and program all your radios to match so that you aren't receiving a whole lot of squelch breaks and things like that, especially if you're camping somewhere where there's a lot of GMRS traffic you're able to hear the people that you want to hear and not hear the people that you don't want to hear. Works really, really well for me. So I really like doing that. This makes this really easy. And of course, you can do it on the fly because all you need is your phone or your tablet, your radio, and your wireless programmer. Okay, so the last radio I want to talk about is this Baofeng BFR3. Now this is a tri-band ham radio, so it's not a GMRS radio. So this is for all you uh, ham radio guys out there. Now, one of the things that's kind of funny about this radio is when I go and program it in Chirp, and Chirp is how I primarily program my radios, for those of you who are interested in radio programming. Uh, I connect these to a laptop with a cord and program them up. This radio is not listed as a Baofeng radio. It's listed as a Radioddity uh, 5X3, I think. UV5X3 is the, uh, is the code for when I'm programming it in Chirp. Let's see if we can find this radio in the TID radio program. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the radio and I have to get out of here. So it's not a TID radio. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Radioddity, right? So there's Radioddity. And if you look, there is no uh, UV uh, 5X3, right? So there's a UV 82X3, but there's no UV 5X3. So it's obviously not the same as what it is in Chirp. I'm not gonna try any of these. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to Baofeng and I'm gonna to look to see if they have any tri-bander models of the Baofengs. Because even though it says Baofeng, let's look to see if there's a BFR3 in the list, which is the model number. So as I scroll, there's some BF, but no, no BFR3. So the question is, 
can you program this radio with this dongle? And the answer that I've found is yes. So sometimes if your radio is not listed, you need to find something similar and just try it out. So in this case, I'm gonna try this UV5RE Plus. I'm gonna try that one because this is a clone basically of a UV5R from Baofeng. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the programmer. I'm gonna turn it on, turn the radio on, make sure you have enough uh, audio. Okay, I'm gonna set it aside. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click connect Bluetooth. I'm gonna turn it on. And then I'm gonna go ahead and slide this over and we'll see if it reads it. So I'm gonna click read. Look at that, it is reading the radio. You can tell by the flashing lights that it's reading the radio. So we'll see what we get. I'm gonna set it off to the side. And there we are. So if I look at the channels, yep, those are all the channels that have things programmed into them. So really cool. Now, here's something that's really interesting. I have the NOAA weather frequencies programmed into the last uh, couple of channels of this radio. And so all these reds that would indicate that uh, the channel is open, it's not really. So if I go to 127 here and I click that, you'll see that the frequency is 162.000. That's uh, a NOAA weather radio channel. And so I have it listed down here as NOAA 11. There's 11 NOAA channels. I have all of them programmed in. So just because you see that red, oops, let me hit it, read again. Just because you see that red in a channel doesn't mean that it is open. You have to double check, click on it before you start entering in data and stuff, make sure that you're not changing a channel. So as I said before, I've got, every, I've got something in every single channel here, <clears throat> but you know, there is um, all of my NOAA channels. So there's stuff programmed in there, even though it's showing that it isn't. Now let's say that instead of being home here in Lithia, Florida, where I live, I'm off somewhere else and I need a repeater list. Well, that's really cool. They have this little button down here called repeater. So I click that and what it's going to do, let me see here, repeater. There we go, sorry, I didn't hit it hard enough. It's gonna ask me if I want it to use my location and I always just tell it to use once. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna bring up the repeaters that are close to me. So this repeater, uh, is a 440 repeater uh, in my town, so it's 1.67 miles away. I know right where it is, actually. Here's one that's 7.88 miles away. Uh, so they have a number of repeaters. There's one in, in Brandon at 8.22 miles away, another one 8 miles away, 11 miles away, 12 and a half miles away. So if I wanted to put any of these into my radio, I could tell it to import into the radio uh, and it would program the radio with these new uh, repeater frequencies. So really, really cool. So if you're on the go and you want to uh, program in the local repeaters for wherever you are, all you have to do is use this app, hit the repeater button, and it will bring up the repeaters that are close to you based on your GPS location. I'm not going to change it because like I said, I already have all those programmed in. But if I wanted to, I could I could do that. So really, really neat, really easy to use. And then again, if you change anything, you know, you hit the right button and it'll write it to the radio. Uh, you can save it, you know, all those things. So really, really easy, easy app to use and a great way to change your radios in the field. Like if you don't have your laptop and you don't have your your, your programming cable and all those things, if you have a radio that operates with this TID radio, programmer, you can program it right from a phone or a tablet. Really, really neat. So all in all, guys, I really, really like the programmer from TID Radio. Let's talk pros and cons. So there are some, some cons. Obviously, uh, not all radios have that style of connector. Not all radios are listed on the app to program. And not 
all even, you know, Baofangs or Baofang clones are on the list. So you have a radio that might work, like I showed you with my Baofang Tribander, but you have to figure out which model it corresponds to. So there is some trial and error, and then every once in a while it won't read from the radio and you have to reconnect it. That's common with Bluetooth stuff, guys. Bluetooth is not a super reliable connection. But all in all, guys, I've never had really any problems with this. I've been messing with this uh, for a little bit now since they sent it to me. And quite honestly, anytime it doesn't connect or doesn't read, it's mostly my error. Like the volume isn't up high enough on the radio and so it didn't read it. Or the, um, or in the case of it's the wrong read rate, it's because I'm switching from radio to radio and it just hasn't caught up and it kind of needs to resync. Uh, but that is really no no big issue at all. And so, you know, for you GMRS users, I highly, highly recommend that you program in privacy codes on your on your channels so that you're only hearing the stuff you want to hear. Uh, like I said, especially when I'm camping up on a mountaintop somewhere, I get a lot of signals that break squelch. And so I'm just hearing, you know, just, just static on the radio. And I'm, you know, I'm not interfering with anybody but I'm just hearing static on the radio. But when I put in those privacy tones, I don't hear that anymore. And I hear very clearly when my wife or my son uh, keys up on the radio to communicate with me, uh, I can hear them and they can hear me. So if you're a GMRS user, definitely uh, put in those privacy tones if you are using GMRS with, with family or friends that you're camping with so that they're uh, all, all, all set up the same. And that's really easy to do with this programmer. If you're a ham radio operator, guys, I mean, you know, I'm traveling with my handhelds all the time. The uh, ability to not have to pull out the laptop and the cord and all that stuff and fire up Chirp and, and program everything that way is really, really nice. If I just open up my iPad or my phone and just enter in a frequency into a, a blank channel and program that in or pull up the local repeaters or that kind of thing, uh, it's really, really, really nice. I mean... Uh, really easy, you know, really easy to use. So, you know, those are definitely the pros. One of the things I read in the manual that I wasn't crazy about is that they said um, the standby battery only lasts a day. Um, I'm wondering if that's if it's left on. I'm, I'm assuming that if it's off and fully charged, it should stay off. I would be disappointed if every time I went to use this thing, I had to charge it for an hour before I could use it. I'm not sure yet because that hasn't happened to me. So I don't want to say that's the case at all. My guess is, is what they're saying is, hey, if you leave it on, it, the battery only lasts about a day and then you're going to have to recharge it. So make sure you turn it off. Uh, if you throw it in a bag or something, um, I have this problem with other devices. I'll throw it in a bag and something will hit the button and it'll turn on and kill the battery. So you may want to just save the, the little box. I mean, in this case, the box is really nice, right? You know, you can put the the device in and the charging cable it won't take up any room in your radio bag and that way you're protecting it you make sure that you've got everything uh it could be a pro for you could be a con but this is the length of the charging cord so if you have um you know a, a charger that's really close to you and you want a short cord awesome you got one if you are one of those people who need a longer cord you know it's simple usb usb c you know, connection. So, I mean, you probably have a drawer full of these things. Uh, so, you know, if, you know, it shouldn't be a problem, but that's the length of the cord. I actually like it, but hey, you might uh, choose differently. And then, you know, obviously the, the last con is probably that you have to download a proprietary app, right? So some people want to do that. Some people don't want to do that. You know, that's, that's, that's totally up to you, but obviously to use this device, you need their app. Uh, what would be absolutely amazing is if I could Bluetooth run uh, Chirp off of this thing. That would be really, really cool. I haven't tried it. I don't. I'm guessing it doesn't work, but I haven't. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried to connect this to a laptop. Uh, but that would be really, really neat. Um, but in this case, the app doesn't bother me at all. Uh, you know, it, and it seems to work really well. It's really easy to use. Uh, simply laid out. So I have no problem with the app. So all in all, guys, uh, I do. I really, I really like it. It's gonna go in my radio bag because I always have my tablet with me because I'm pulling up repeater book or I'm uh, running, um, 
you know, QRZ or something like that to look up call signs. So it's definitely something that's gonna go in my radio bag and, bag and it's gonna get, gonna get used a lot. If you're bulk programming a lot of radios, you're not gonna wanna go channel by channel uh, in the app. You're gonna want to have more of a spreadsheet type feel, so you're gonna wanna use Chirp. So it doesn't replace all of my radio programming needs, but definitely modifying a channel or adding a channel in the field or on the go or when I'm traveling, guys, this thing is pretty cool. So I'm pretty excited about it. I wanna thank TID Radio for sending it to me. Guys, I did not buy this with my own money. They did send it to me, so I wanna be you know full disclosure on that. But it is a handy piece of kit, and I and I really I really like it. Uh, if it didn't work, believe me, I would tell you. But guys, it's worked for all the radios I've tested, and I'm I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it. So whether you're a ham radio operator or a GMRS user, you could definitely find a use for one of these if you have a radio that works with it. And if you don't, it's always good to get another radio. At least that's what I keep telling my wife. She may not agree, but hey. Uh, she likes having good communications at the at the campsite when we don't have cell phone service. So I'll just remind her that next time she complains when a new radio comes home. Guys, I'm Kevin with Kemp Outside, your inside source for all things outside. We exist to help moms and dads take their kids camping, hiking, fishing, learn about nature, and develop a conservation ethic. One of the things that I am really big on is safety when I'm in the field with my family, whether I'm boating, fishing, camping, hiking. I wanna make sure everyone has good communications, especially when we're places where there is no cell phone service. And guys, we go a lot of places where there is no cell phone. So if you're one of the people on, who's on my channel who hasn't ever considered any kind of radio communications for your outdoor use, guys, I highly, highly recommend it. You can easily start off with like the little FRS radios you can buy at Bass Pro Shops and Walmart and things like that but those will only work so well and you'll only get so much distance and that kind of thing. I, I highly, highly recommend you step up to a better quality of radio. I highly encourage you to look into GMRS, the General Mobile Radio Service for your family's needs. Yes, it takes a license to get. The license is just a, a cost. I think it's $35 for a 10 year license. There's no exam. And then guys, if you find that you're really into radio, I highly recommend getting into ham radio. Ham radio has been uh, a really uh, great hobby for me and for my son, and I really enjoy it. And so I like uh, using my radios, you know, when I'm, when I'm out in the field. And so this is gonna get a lot of use. But definitely for safety, guys, you guys need to have a plan for communications beyond your cell phone if you're out in the woods or on the water. It's very, very important. You know, please, please, please be safe when you're out there and companies like TID Radio can help you uh, because they have they have some great radios. I have some TID Radio, GMRS radios, and I, I really like them. I'm gonna put a link, by the way, guys, to my TID Radio, uh, GMRS radio down uh, below. I'll also put a link to my TalkPod uh, radio as well. And then also, guys, I'm gonna put several links to this um, that uh, TID Radio asked me to, to put, as well as an Amazon link. Some of the links, guys, are affiliate links. So when you use my my link to purchase, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It's a great way to support Camp Outside as we get a little commission on the sale. Uh, some of the links aren't uh, affiliate links, but uh, don't worry either way. Either way, whatever is the best way for you to purchase one of these things, I highly recommend it. So again, thanks to TID Radio for sending it to me. And guys, if you have any questions about radio communications, my channel is not focused on the really highly skilled, very experienced uh, radio operator. I'm really more trying to introduce moms and dads into uh, the idea that, hey, we probably ought to have something besides our cell phones when we're camping. Uh, so if you have any questions about radio, right, uh, ham radio, GMRS, FRS, MERS, any of the other radio services that you've heard about, Drop something in the comments below. I would love to hear from you and I would love to help you get started uh, with uh, some kind of radio communications for you and your family. If you have any questions at all, drop something in the comments or you can hit us up on our other social media. We're on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and X, formerly known as Twitter. Can we all just keep calling it Twitter? X is such a stupid name. Anyway, I'm gonna let that go. Hey, Elon, if you're watching, and I know you're not, change it back to Twitter. You can always hit us up on our social media to ask questions or just follow us. We'd love that. Or you can connect with us on our website at kempoutside.com. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. 
Thank you.